Hello and welcome to another Flywheel Films video. My name is Austin and today we're going to be talking about more wheels. Not, not those wheels. We are uh, going to be talking about getting aftermarket wheels for your enthusiast car. And I specifically am going to walk you through why I chose the wheels I did for my Fiesta ST. Now if you're new to the channel, you may not be familiar, but this is my 2016 Fiesta ST. And if you have a keen eye, you may have noticed I have wheels on there that uh, haven't really been discussed at length. So we're gonna do that in today's video. Stay tuned. This is the Koenig Decagram. And today we're gonna be talking about all the quirks and features. Just kidding, I am not Doug DeMiro, but today we are gonna talk about the quirks and features of your wheels and tires and get a little bit into the nerdery of why I chose what I chose some general buying advice if you're looking to get some new shoes for your car. Shoes and wheels draw a lot of similarities. First of which is style. In my opinion, a good set of wheels can make or break the look of a car just like shoes can make or break the look of an outfit. But like any type of fashion or style, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Some value form, others value function, some just want to stand out. The same definitely applies to wheels. I had many people ask me why I chose the Aerodome my last setup. If you don't remember or you didn't see the videos, I had a set of Team Dynamics Pro Race 3s. They were a 17 by 7 with a offset of positive 48. I love them and they look great. They were very unique in the Fiesta scene, but if we continue the shoe metaphor, think of it as walking around in a pair of John Mob loafers. They were not super comfortable, but they definitely were a conversation starter and they looked the part, but they just weren't comfortable to walk around in day in and day out. I wanted to get something that was a little bit more supple on the road and had a little bit of a meteor setup and was a little bit more flush to the fender. So that's why I decided to get a different set of wheels. If you're like me and you're also considering upgrading your wheels and getting something a little bit different, but you don't know where to start, this video is for you. I'm gonna break down some of the specs you need to know in order to make a purchasing decision for your car. So let's talk specs. We're gonna cover a lot in this section, so get your notepads out. When talking about wheels, tons of numbers can be thrown around. I tried my best to find the five most important specs that you should know when buying wheels. Diameter is the measurement across the face of the wheel Width is the distance from the inner and the outer lip. Both of these are measured in inches. Offset is complicated, but most simply put, it's the distance from the wheel's hub mounting surface to the center line of the wheel. This varies a lot from car to car, but most simply put, it dictates how close the lip of your wheel is to the fender of your car. Bolt pattern is the number of bolts keeping the wheels on the hub and the distance between those bolts. Wheel center bore is the size of the hub that protrudes into the back of the wheel. These three are measured in millimeters. Makes total sense. The stock specs of the Fiesta are a 17 by 7, so 17 inch diameter and a 7 inch width with a positive 48 millimeter offset. The bolt pattern is 4 by 108 and the hub bore is 63.4. It's very important to know these specs going into your wheel shopping excursion. I knew I wanted a smaller wheel and something a little bit wider, but with a Fiesta, wheel options are very, very limited. So unfortunately, I didn't have a ton to choose from. If you drive a more common car like a Honda, Mazda, Toyota, you're probably gonna have a lot of options. And if you don't know what you like or you don't like, I strongly recommend going to your forums, your Facebook groups, or even a resource like the Fitment Industries Gallery. That is a place that people upload images of their car and they talk about their wheel setup, their tire setup, and their suspension setup. So you can try to get close to that Fitment if it's something that you like. I'm not sponsored by Fitment Industries, but I did buy my last set of wheels from them and I had a great experience. I landed on the Koenig Decagram due to a few reasons. Most importantly, they fit the Fiesta. They came in a 4x108. Second most importantly, they were the specs I was looking for. They were 16 by 8, so they were an inch smaller and an inch wider. And that was exactly what I wanted for my car. But with downsizing or changing the diameter away from stock specs in general, there's a lot of challenges that come with that, especially on the tire front of things. Let's get into that. Tires. 
I can make multiple videos. In fact, there are multiple channels dedicated to this topic. For that reason, I'm going to be short and concise. When talking about enthusiast cars or sports cars, there are three main tire categories that I'm going to cover. That is summer tires, all season or all weather tires, and winter tires. You can think of these tires in a Venn diagram format. If you live in a temperate region and cold weather is not a consideration, summer tires are your best bet. They provide the best grip and overall best performance. If you live in a place that sees both hot and cold temperatures, and you see a lot of snow and rain, all season or all weather tires are going to be your best choice. If you live in an area where snow is inevitable and you have no choice but to drive in it, winter tires are hugely helpful, but they, like summer tires, are primarily used in a single season. I may have lost you at this point, so let me see if I can reel you back in with yet another shoe metaphor. If you're going running, you'd probably reach for a nice, cushiony, light pair of running shoes. If you're going to go hike in the snow, you'd probably get a warm, insulated, waterproof pair of boots. If you needed one shoe to fit both of those scenarios, you're probably going to compromise a little bit on either how light and cushiony they are or how warm and insulated they are. Same goes for choosing tires. If your tires need to perform well in the hot and the cold, you're probably going to lack a little performance on each side of the spectrum. For that reason, all season and all weather tires are a common option, but may not be the best suited for each individual situation. If we lived in an ideal world, having different tires for each individual application would be ideal. However, not all budgets or garages are conducive to having two or three sets of tires. For that reason, I chose a high performance all season tire. Thankfully, tires actually have everything you need to know about them stamped on the sidewall. There are a lot of numbers on the sidewall, and to keep things simple, we're only going to talk about the big three, section width, aspect ratio, and diameter. Section width is the first three digit number in the tire code, and this is the width measured in millimeters. Aspect ratio is the second number, it's a two digit number, it is the height of the sidewall expressed as a percentage of the section width. Diameter is the last number and that indicates the wheel's diameter measured in inches. Rolling diameter is the last thing we're going to cover and that is essentially the tire width and the wheel width combined. So you're going to measure across the face of the wheel from one tread to the other. Getting back to my new wheels, I wanted a smaller wheel, so I got a 16 instead of a 17, but that in turn means that I need to figure out what my rolling diameter is so I can match that with my new tires. Why is this important, you may ask? There are a lot of considerations when adjusting your rolling diameter, a big one being your speedometer's accuracy. You can adjust this in some cars to make up for a upsize or downsize in rolling diameter, but another consideration is fitment and making sure that your tire doesn't hit anything when you're turning. In order to match your rolling diameter, there's a bit of math that needs to be done. If you're like me and you enjoy when computers do math for you, thankfully there's a few calculators out there that can do this calculation. All you have to do is plug in your stock tire size and the tires you're considering and it will spit out a comparison between the two rolling diameters. All the resources mentioned in this video can be found in the description below. The stock tire size on a Fiesta is a 205 40 17. I landed on going for a 205 45 16. So of course that is a inch smaller in diameter being a 16 instead of a 17 and it's a slightly larger aspect ratio. If you're familiar with tires, you might be thinking, Austin, you probably could have gone a little bit wider on the section width. And I definitely could have. However, in a 16 inch wheel, there's not a ton of tire options available and I needed an all season due to my application of when I drive the car and where I take it. For that reason, I went for a slightly smaller section width, but it's actually worked out really well. I did a lot of research beforehand and saw that other people were running this tire with no problem, and I've had the same experience. I have lots of pictures that I'll be playing on the screen right now so you can see what my fitment looks like if you're looking at these wheels for yourself. In hindsight, I definitely wish I would have gone for a slightly wider tire and maybe a little bit meatier as well, like a 215.50 or 225.45. However, at the time, like I said, I could not find tires in those specs that were available. 
It is important to note that not all tires are made the same. Two tires with the same listed section width may actually have different tread widths. A lot of tire sites will delineate the difference between the tread width and the section width. I know Tire Rack does, and that can be very helpful when you're looking at your individual tire sizes. You can really get lost in the weeds on this, and I definitely spent a lot of time on the forum seeing what people were running, what tires worked best. At the end of the day, like I said, use those resources I laid out and you'll be just fine. All right, we just covered a ton of info, and if you made it this far in the video, first of all, thank you. But you're also going to be glad you stayed because I'm not quite done. There's a few nuggets that I have left for you to finish off your wheel and tire package. We'll call these your accessories. The first of which is going to be lug nuts. I would really strongly recommend uh, picking up an aftermarket set of lug nuts for a few reasons. First of which, looks matter. OEM chrome lug nuts can definitely take away from a matte black or bronze or gunmetal wheel. Also, some OEM lug nuts may not fit with the tolerance of your new wheels. And most aftermarket lug nuts are designed with tighter tolerances and wheel preservation in mind. You're not going to be scratching your wheel, taking your lug nuts off and on. And if you own a Ford, you'll actually destroy your OEM lug nuts whenever you take them off if your Ford is from the years of 2016 to I think like 2020. Uh, thank you so much Ford for making lug nuts that expand with heat. <laughs> also, lug nuts are not universal, so make sure you look up your lug nut thread pitch before you buy. Sounds complex, I have an example on the screen. Uh, the Fiesta ST thread pitch is M12 by one and a half. There's not a lot of options for thread pitch, just make sure you do some homework so you don't buy the wrong ones. Next is hub centric rings. These make up for any difference in your vehicle's hub bore compared to the center bore of your wheels. For example, the Fiesta ST center bore is a 63.4 millimeter, and the decagrams that I bought have a hub bore of 73.1 millimeters. All you have to do in this case is go to the internet and say I need a 73.1 to 63.4 millimeter hub centric ring and there should be plenty of options. If the wheels that you bought have a center bore that is smaller than your cars, I, I hope you haven't bought them yet because uh, you're going to be in trouble there. <laughs> Lastly, let's talk about TPMS sensors. You may have heard that part of upgrading your wheels is dealing with that pesky TPMS light on your dash. However, that is not the case. Most companies that sell wheel and tire packages do offer to include TPMS sensors in your purchase. Once you get them in the mail, your local tire technician can pair these sensors to your car, kind of like you pair some Bluetooth headphones to your phone. I would definitely recommend getting these because they can absolutely be helpful at times and that light won't be on on your dash, which for me is a huge added bonus. I hate when I have lights on my dash. Okay, after all of that, you should feel good about making your next wheel and tire purchase. I cannot stress enough, every car is different. Make sure you do your homework and consult experts when necessary so you don't make an expensive mistake. There is a lot more that we can cover on the topic of wheels and tires and a ton of stuff that we can cover in this style video. If you enjoyed it, please let us know. We appreciate the feedback. If you have any questions, corrections, comments, leave those down below. We love to interact with you guys when we can. Also, we have a ton more Fiesta and Miata content coming very soon. So if you aren't subscribed already and you own one of those two cars, you're missing out. I'm going to go for a drive before it gets too dark. So we'll catch you guys in the next one.